You are tuned to ARP on the Accelerated Radio Network. It's 12 noon, and it's time to have lunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Bringing money talk you can understand. And now here's your host, Miss Charlene. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Miss Charlene, and welcome to Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Today we're excited to have in our studio Mr. Marty Kari. Hi, Marty. Hi, Charlene. Hi. Hi, everyone. How you doing? Hey. Doing excellent. Thank That's you. That's good. Marty is one of the owners of Arkstone Financial, and they are a mortgage company that is in Los Feliz area of LA. Correct. Exactly. And so, how long have you owned that um, that company? How long? Um, since two thousand. Two thousand. So fifteen years now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's great. It's an accomplishment to get through the, um, the downturns of the market. I was going to say that you went through the downturn of the market and came out on the other side still alive. That's phenomenal. It's amazing. Yeah. And actually, we had the best years um, of our um, business uh, within those years just because we've always maintained an A plus client base and um, because that's what how we treated everybody and that's how we put them into the better loans that they should have been into. Right. And none of, most of our, our clients did not uh, encounter foreclosures um, and or short sales or things of that nature. So the um, hardships were minimized on their end. So therefore, many of these people have come back to us multiple times over and over with their family. Right, yeah, no, that's commendable because during those years, it seems like almost everyone was losing their houses or just unfortunate. And if they weren't positioned correctly, it was a catastrophe. So yep. that's a testament to you and your company and what you do. Yep. It's, you got to take care of everybody just like they're one of your family members and how that's how you treat everybody. That's, you know, you really put them in the right products at that point. You're right. Now, speaking of that, what is your background? You came from credit union, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. My um, first job in the mortgage banking world was at the credit union, at uh, Warner Brothers Credit Union. Okay. And... Um, 19. Oh, maybe I won't mention the year. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> In the early 1990s. So, <laughs> and um, basically in underwriting and then became chief credit officer, um, moving on to, um, you know, larger corporations, mortgage banking corporations, such mm -hmm. as Countrywide, uh, which obviously was, um, a, you know, a cor one of the corporates of the downturn of the market, yeah. obviously. So, um, my tenure with Countrywide was very short period of time, and then started the um, you know Arkson Financial. Yeah, and so from that having that background, um, especially with credit unions, they're more of a family atmosphere, you know, and they get to know their members and you know take good care of them because they are usually people who work for the company that the credit union is from, right? Exactly. So the members so. are the create. I mean, without their shares in the credit union, there is no credit union basically. So right. you everybody puts their you know, savings, checking, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. and predominantly ch savings mm -hmm. accounts with credit unions. Um, and it basically, the credit unions comes about, and mm -hmm. with everybody's pooled funds, um, it goes into lending money to one another, basically. That's that exactly point. what's happening. So, yeah. yeah. So it's creating an uh, organization of pooled funds to mm -hmm. help one another. And uh, they hire people like, me and you know my business partner was the CEO of the credit union mm -hmm. um, at the time, Michael Winston, and um, basically we make decisions on credit um, and if the person is a good credit risk or not, um, so we can protect the members' assets. Basically. Right. And generally, uh, the mentality is, hey, you know, I don't want to make you know if you and I are in the same company, I don't want to make Charlene lose her deposit in, right. her, uh, in her credit union. So therefore, I have a little bit more obligation to repay my loan back. Right. Um, there's a little bit of a guilt factor exactly. with the credit unions. Um, unfortunately, the credit union wor world has changed. Once mm -hmm. I left, it was more like a bank. Mm -hmm. It has become much more like the banks because um, a lot of the members were losing um, mm -hmm. uh, their services so they're, they're to the banks, basically. So you know, it, you can have a savings account at the credit union, but you know, you needed a checking, you needed a credit card, you needed a debit card, right. online banking. As technology evolved, um, it became less and less prevalent to bank with a credit union mm -hmm. um, unless the credit union really up kept up there. with the times yeah and you know as you know uh overhead and things of that nature come yes. about at that point and um the cost effectiveness of being with a credit union becomes less um Attractive, effective at yeah. that point so okay yeah. but that being your background it seems that because i know how you run your company and it's kind of a 
family oriented situation and um, how well the loan officers are taught to care for their clients you know and not put them into programs that might possibly harm them Mm -hmm. so today we wanted to talk about our first-time home buyers who are definitely the ones we have Mm -hmm. to treat with tender loving care because they're just learning about purchasing a home for the first time and it can be a very intimidating frightening experience if it's not handled correctly absolutely yeah and we've got a huge generation up ahead of us that's uh, ready the millennials that are ready about to buy homes and um, embark on that venture in their life so we got a you know it's a different way of teaching people because mm-hmm. of all the technology that's available these days um, hence the radio so hence the radio <laughs> right um, but basically we, we definitely need to get the word out about the products um, and yeah. things have changed from the time that was available back in you know 2007 prior to that you know mm-hmm. things programs were different than it is currently just because um things have gone a little bit tighter on credit um Mm -hmm. and the amount of checking uh that we do on an individual's background has gone a little bit more extensive more extensive Mm. yes yeah that's interesting is it gotten more extensive since 2008 because they weren't doing checks basically they were just credit checks absolutely mm-hmm. so prior so if you look at the early 2000s and um in the 1990s technology wasn't as prevalent so right. we didn't do mm. a lot of checking of um credit what you know for example i'll give you guys an example right now it takes us about five seconds to get credit reports back mm. uh, oh, back then yeah. it would take a day for right. us to get a credit <laughs> report back Right now, we could check uh, for multiple ways of checking for fraud. Um, Back then, there's really no way of checking for fraud Mm -hmm. um, other than, you know, some of the basic information that's out there. Right now, we've got Google that has taken over everything. And all that information is (laughs) available to us so we can find out anything about everything about the person before giving the loan out to that individual. So it's definitely a little bit more um, extensive background check on the person. And yes, in 2008, br- prior to that, mm, if you had a pulse, you know, we gave a loan out. To <laughs> right. Well, not at Artstone Financial, unfortunately, because we right. did, you know, a lot of, you know, credit check in a sense of, um, you know, meeting the individual, seeing if that individual uh, is appropriately placed in a proper loan, essentially, mm-hmm. at that point in time. But, you know, there were a lot of companies that just gave loans out just to give loans out because of profitability's sake. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, and it didn't take in consideration the person's um, appropriateness of getting to that home or not, basically. And being able to stay in it. Exactly. Because getting the person in is one thing, but maintaining it is completely different. Absolutely. Yeah. So would you say that... Um, you know, like Elizabeth was saying, like now that they have all of these um, tools in place so that you can better qualify a person and people aren't don't have the ability to anymore simultaneously simultaneously buy more than one home Mm -hmm. because that was happening a lot too. They'd buy it, you know, get Mm pre-qualified at a couple of places and because technology wasn't where it where it is today. AKA fraud. AKA fraud. (laughs) Right. They could Ten, you know, technically buy more than one home at a time, and that's crazy. I didn't even know. That. Yes, and so today that's not possible because of the way that you know the credit checks and things are done. So correct. Yeah. So um, you know, just like Charlene said, I mean, if you're trying to uh, quote unquote pull a fast one, that's really not. <laughs> it's not going to happen today. <laughs> yeah, it's less uh, you know possible to happen than it used to be. Basically. Right. Mm-hmm. So now, as a first-time home buyer, um, I remember when I b- bought my first home, I was, you know, nervous, apprehensive, you know, um, and I was in the mortgage in- industry, and I was still a little bit nervous about, you know, that level of commitment. Um, I was fortunate because I already knew programs, mm-hmm. and so, you know, but it's still, you know, you think, oh, my goodness, that big commitment, you know, mm-hmm. but if you have a loan officer and you're with a company that can properly advise you it makes it a lot less um intimidating correct yeah right? um the philosophy is at art financial at least mm-hmm. is to sit down with the person whether it be on the phone or whether it be on you know face to face which is preferable and advise the person um from a to z um uh, nuts and bolts whatever you want to call it basically just because the fact that you know it is a huge uh undertaking of a person i right. mean it's probably one of the biggest investments that you can make uh in your life 
Um, so yeah, it's really important to understand the risks of buying a home, the benefits of buying a home, which to me is huge far um, outweigh the risk yeah correct and you know at one point understand the mechanics of you know what's required to qualify for a loan uh but really i i believe it firmly what where you know a lot of first time buyers go on the internet to look for things not the proper choice of getting information exactly um and we could talk about that in a minute just mm -hmm. because you know there are vast array of programs out there and you should know about all of them right before making a decision mm-hmm um, it's, you know, an analogy, I'm an analogy type of a person, but you know, if you're going to a boutique versus going to a, um, a department store, a department store is going to have every single brand out there versus a boutique might have just one particular brand basically. Right. So, um, and a boutique necessarily doesn't mean it's a bad thing because you're going to obviously get a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. um, and we consider ourselves as a boutique environment mm -hmm. um, at Arsenal Financial. Uh, but we do carry the department store mentality as exactly. far as you know, having all the products. Mm -hmm. so. so it's the best of both worlds. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and I like what you said about the online kind of browsing and shopping thing too because we've talked about that with other types of things like insurance mm -hmm. and um uh, a lot of people get themselves into trouble by just trying to do it themselves online and not talking to an expert that knows a little bit more about the pro programs and can explain them a little bit better. And I know for me, just being being around the mortgage banking world a little bit more than I have been in the past, um, uh, just knowledge is power, quote unquote. And um, I, uh, the more that I've learned about it, the less intimidating buying a home really exactly. seems or impossible. Intimidating or impossible, whatever. You know, it, nothing is impossible. Yeah, right. so, <laughs> so everything is, is it, possible as long as you set your mind to it. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's the intimidation factor that kind of stops you. I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I would be kind of virtually clueless on how to buy a home for the first time. What would be the, literally the first team t thing that anybody would do is call who or talk to who? Well, I mean, I would probably is my it? first advice would be is to a credit is a big part of uh, buying mm -hmm. a home and how you handled yourself in the past, whether it be throughout college or, you know, as you've embarked on your first job. Um, it's really important to maintain good credit. And okay. the first step is, you know, there are a lot of, you know, when we talked about online. There are a lot of online resources where you can go to freedomcredit.com or um, annualcredit.com, things of that nature. And pull a crop, copy of credit and see what that credit um, score looks like and what kind of, you know, reporting has been done on your uh, past uh, credit movement, per se. So uh, <laughs> The credit uh, movement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that said, I mean, I would definitely start uh, with that piece. So uh, is so. that something that would be on the person that's wanting to buy a home? Exactly. Find out what your credit is and present it to somebody, I guess? Well, for, start, uh, yeah, you could do that. Um, ne not necessarily. Do not present your credit you know, to anybody per se, just because it's going to have your social security number and a lot of fraud and whatnot is going on out there. So mm -hmm. to make sure that your information is secure, mm -hmm. uh, wherever you're getting it from. But, um, that being said, I mean, make sure that you understand what your credit is. So if there is a, uh, uh, incorrect reporting such as, such as a, yeah. um, a late payment of some mm -hmm. sort that you've made, I would definitely uh, make sure that that's corrected if it's not correct. Um, okay. and, and if it is correct, you know, obviously, you know, let's take steps to correct that situation, get new credit cards and or use that credit card more often to be able to s show repayment history, basically. So, okay. so they could show, oh, yeah, I made a mistake once, but now look at me, I'm much better, basically. <laughs> I'm much better, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, credit is a, um, a whole topic of its own, per se, but it's really important to maintain good credit. So before you even think about buying a home, make sure that your credit is sound, Absolutely. basically. Absolutely, because okay. that, 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 that can take time to fix. And if it's great, then you can go right away and, you know, move on to the next step, which I would say um, your down payment, um, you know, try to figure out how much of a down payment that you've got um, to put towards this property, um, whether it be a gift from your parents, gift from, you know, that lost long uncle. Uh, <laughs> and or a or random stranger. <laughs> can't be a random stranger. It <laughs> has, be to, be, <laughs> has really? to be. Has to be. Really? It has to be a family member family or a, a relative, right. a close relative. 